2024 is here. We're living in the future. Preschool me in 2002 would not believe it. Dude, actually, when I was in preschool in 2002, YouTube had not even been invented yet. What a terrifying realization. Did not mean to start this video with an existential crisis about the passage of time. The point is, today, I'm sharing my 2024 fashion trend predictions. I love thinking about fashion trends in the larger context of socio-cultural conditions, the cultural values of an era, how each new moment in fashion and culture is shaped by the history that precedes it. So that's the lens through which I am making these predictions and discussing them today. And I'm so excited to talk about them. So let's get into it. First, I feel like we need to acknowledge where we're coming from for fashion in 2024. What were the mainstream 2023 fashion trends and movements that we might be building on or pushing back against for this year? And I would personally say one of the biggest overarching fashion themes that defined 2023 was a trend towards neutral, polished, and traditional. Think clean girl aesthetic, quiet luxury, stealth wealth, just the whole movement towards understated classic looks, as opposed to the super kooky, funky, bold, over-the-top fashion of the previous handful of years. So I believe understated fashion will continue to reign over the mainstream in 2024, but I also think we are getting a little sick of the overly polished, perfect, clean aesthetic. So I suspect we are going to see a vibe shift towards a messier, more casual, dare I say, 2010s grungy style? I think it will still be simple and understated, but we'll see a rejection of the respectability that's been a big part of that look this year. I think this will almost be a spectrum from like looks that are slightly more casual, but still muted and inconspicuous. And then looks that are casual to the point of being a rebellious statement, like underwear as pants or a visible bra. And then there may be looks that prioritize rebellion and messiness to the point that it actually kind of stops being casual and starts being like, party attire. But still, understated messy party attire. Does this all make sense? I kind of feel like that meme of Charlie Day right now, like trying to connect together all these disparate ideas, because I fear some of these trend predictions are actually a little contradictory to one another. But first of all, contradictory trends happen simultaneously all the time. And my point is, these different trend predictions would all be a response to or evolution of the chic, classy, minimal styling we've been seeing in 2023. Some of the trends we've seen so far or seen the beginnings of that indicate this shift to me are the return of the visible bra, casual metallics, underwear as pants, of course, or just shorter like micro shorts. I actually keep seeing these ones from free people and I gotta say they do feel like sort of a 2024 reinterpretation of the American apparel disco shorts of the 2010s. Makes you think. We've also seen the rockstar GF niche aesthetic and people discussing the return of indie sleaze. Speaking of which, the 2008 recession coincided with both office wear in the club and a lot of these overly casual trends that reject respectability. And we've already got office wear as it girl fashion and signs of a recession. So the messy grungy style is bound to make a return to complete the trifecta. We're also seeing a lot of moto boots, those like shearling lined moto jackets that I have seen from literally like every single trendy store in America this fall and winter. I've also been seeing fur jackets starting to pop up more and more. I see those getting bigger in 2024, but specifically fur jackets with like a 70s rocker party vibe, you know? You see what I'm giving here? Something more Kesha coded, not like a classy 1940s lady fur jacket vibe. That's what I'm imagining we'll see more. I don't know. I've also noticed a few random teen girls out in the world wearing ripped jeans lately, and I'm like, oh, are ripped jeans back? Or did they never leave for teenagers and I just am old and haven't seen a teenager in a while? You guys will have to let me know about this one. Anyone who is or knows a teen, are teens wearing ripped jeans? Did they ever stop wearing ripped jeans? Let me know. Everything I just listed is already like the beginnings of trends that we've started to see already, but I think a lot of those things will keep getting bigger in 2024, and I think we'll probably see a lot of other looks that will also fall into those categories of understated casual, statement-making casual, or messy party vibes. Oh, and Pinterest does this annual trend forecast called Pinterest Predicts based on trending search terms. It is super interesting to look at. I will link it below. But one Pinterest trend prediction for 2024 that especially piqued my interest was Jazz Revival, because I had no idea this was a thing, but apparently searches for things like jazz club outfit or jazz bar aesthetic are on the rise. And I feel like jazz totally fits into this 
transition that I am predicting from very classy, polished, old money vibes to something a little more loose and rebellious and free-spirited. Because I think to a lot of people, jazz kind of embodies both of those things simultaneously. So I'll be very interested to see how this manifests, but I can definitely see that happening. And finally, one specific item that sort of fits into this category that I have been suspecting is due for a comeback soon, our plaid flannel shirts. I just feel like they're totally understated casual. They're kind of classic, but they can also be kind of like edgy and grungy and punkish depending on how you style them. And I just feel like they're due for a comeback. I still have my flannels from when they were popular in the 2010s. And maybe I'm just willing this into existence, but I think we'll be seeing them more in 2024. I plan on styling mine more personally. Now, obviously fashion doesn't just change from one thing to another all at once. There are many different looks and trends and cultural values happening all the time simultaneously. So this is all to say, I think people and fashion will start to react to the preppy polished looks in ways I just described. And also, I think people will carry on wearing that preppy polished look in slightly new iterations. First, I think we will see a rise in maritime motifs. I feel like I keep seeing lobster and fish motifs popping up and nautical vibes definitely connect to like wealth and luxury and a New England coastal elite lifestyle, but it feels much less serious and more playful and fun and leisurely. And honestly, it feels so on the nose that it's like kind of camp and I love that. This isn't necessarily related, although it could be, but I also suspect the next it color that may come after red will be blue. I definitely don't think it's a coincidence that red was the it color of 2023 in the era of classic and timeless fashion being so in style. They just go together. And while I don't think we're letting go of red right at this moment, when its popularity does eventually begin to wane, probably at some point this year, I could see blue taking its place. It's another super timeless classic color, commonly used in more preppy or traditional clothing, often part of uniforms, but it's also just a little calmer and easier on the eyes than red. It's more soothing, so I feel like when red eventually becomes too much, maybe people start finding it tacky. Blue is its chic, sophisticated sibling poised to slide in and take its place. Plus, blue is just so versatile. It can be like really calm and soothing or bold in statement making. I feel like I've seen a lot of both like bright cobalt blue and more of a pale powdery blue, which shows kind of two sides of how that color can be used. And despite blue being my lifelong favorite color, I found myself extra drawn to wearing it lately. And as I always say, whenever I find myself personally drawn to something in fashion, it always turns out that everyone else is thinking the exact same thing and we were all drawn to it together subconsciously by some higher fashion power. No original thoughts in here, apparently. The other evolution I can imagine this more traditional classic style taking in 2024 is what I'm going to call playful prep. I feel like you could also call it eclectic retro. I've seen people use the phrase eclectic grandpa, which just doesn't really resonate with me because my grandpa does not dress like that. <laughs> but basically, I just mean classic, timeless, vintage or vintage inspired pieces, but combined in a way that creates looks that lean more maximalist and whimsical rather than the neutral, minimal classic looks we've been seeing. This is kind of also what I described as collegiate style in a fashion I'm loving right now video I made like two months ago. You can watch that right there if you're interested. And so many of you also said in the comments that you're loving that style right now. I feel like I've been seeing it more and more. So again, I have no original thoughts. I like this and I don't think I'm the only one. Specifically in this category, I can see brooches or pins getting bigger. I always love brooches and pins. My everyday bag has been covered in pins since college, but I've been feeling sort of re-inspired by them lately and much more into brooches lately. So I feel like maybe we'll see that more as a little accessory you can add to give any look a little more character, a little more spice. I also think polo shirts fall perfectly into this intersection of preppy and casual. Plus we've seen rugby shirts getting bigger. It just makes sense. I think polo shirts are gonna have a moment this year in women's fashion. I've also started to see varsity sweaters on my radar like this past fall especially and I can totally see those getting bigger in 2024 as part of this trend. Plaid has obviously been huge. I think it will continue. I just feel like things your grandparents generation might have worn in high school or college. They're coming back in 2024. Okay this next prediction is kind of a wild card. It's not necessarily related to any of the other ones but I just feel like it's coming. I think we're going to see the return of tribal print, but I think it's gonna be rebranded as like Southwestern this time instead to make it seem less problematic. I didn't dress on theme for this one because um, 
I don't have anything. And also, I'm actively rooting against it. Obviously, cowboy and Western influences in fashion have been huge in recent years. And since so much of cowboy fashion is originally appropriated from First Nations clothing, for example, fringed leather jackets, it does feel like cowboy fashion could be a gateway. Also, when I was in middle and high school in the late 2000s, early 2010s, three shoes were completely ubiquitous. Firstly, Uggs. Those have come back. Secondly, Birkenstock Boston Clogs. Those have come back. Thirdly, moccasins. It's only a matter of time, people. I am not hoping that mass-produced garments that bastardize traditional First Nations clothing comes into fashion, but this is just a sinister premonition that I feel the need to share with you all. I mean, if it was coming from actual indigenous fashion designers with the appropriate knowledge and context to create and share their specific traditional clothing as art if they so chose, that would be sick. Totally in favor of that, but not in favor of the crimes of the 2010s. You all are smart. You know this already. You understand why this is problematic. Anyway, let's manifest a more positive outcome here. I would love to hear you all drop any indigenous fashion designers you know in the comments. Okay, my last category of trend predictions is trends that feel responsive to technology and AI. I know, I'm so fucking sick of AI. I don't want to talk about it either, but I do think its recent significance could have a huge impact on fashion. Firstly, I think 2020 2023, and actually the past couple of years, have really given us a lot to think about in regards to technology and image making. What is a fabricated image, a deep fake or AI, and what is a real physical object? What gives a garment physicality beyond just how it looks? I think we're going to see a lot of fashion exploring physical shape texture, movement, dimension, fashion that considers things beyond just how something looks two-dimensionally in a photo, rather how it feels and how it looks in the real world in three dimensions. We could also see the opposite with clothing that looks 2D and flat, but isn't as sort of a commentary. I feel like we've actually already begun to see like a three-dimensional image screen printed flat on the surface of a garment, but then the garment is also three-dimensional because it's on a person's body like this. I just see playing with dimension and flat images versus physical objects being a bigger theme in the future of fashion. The three-dimensional fabricated flowers that seem to only be growing in popularity are definitely an example of this, and I feel like we're going to see more experimentation like that with texture and form. Also, regarding the 3D flowers, I think we're going to start seeing more of them as full plants with like stems and leaves, not just the head of the flower. That also feels a little more true to nature, which is also interesting to consider against the backdrop of AI. I also think with the rise of so much online technology, a return to craft, DIY, and rustic homemade quality in clothing just makes sense. Rustic natural crafts also feel very connected to sustainability. Obviously, sustainability plays a huge role in conversations about fashion right now. And Dare I say, handcrafted goods could also become the next status and wealth signifier now that like quiet luxury aesthetics have been adopted by the masses. Whenever regular people start imitating the things that rich people do, then they have to come up with a new way to distinguish themselves from the masses. And the masses cannot necessarily afford bespoke handcrafted items. But then I feel like the masses could also take it and like do things that look handmade, you know, and not worry about things being perfect. And that kind of plays into that rejection of respectability that we talked about earlier. So I don't know. It could apply to both wealthy aspirational lifestyle and DIYers who reject that. I also just feel like handcrafted items tend to have more texture and physicality to them. The cozy texture of something hand knitted comes to mind. I knitted this little um, hair bow myself. And you know, could it look a little, a little better? Yes, but I like the texture and presence that it adds to the look. The physical texture of embroidery also kind of falls into this. Things that have a physicality that one can experience in person beyond just how it looks. Another thing I wanted to note is that 2024 is a presidential election year in the United States. Many would even say an extra anxiety-inducing election. <laughs> And after some research, I learned that data suggests people are more cautious spenders than usual before a big election, but then bigger spenders than usual after the election. So obviously the US does not dictate fashion in general, but I just thought it would be interesting to consider how that might affect fashion in the US specifically, especially potentially compounded with a recession. It does feel like another contributing factor towards more subdued fashion, but also fashion that embraces maybe DIY or handcrafting. Obviously, this is not the end-all be-all of 2024 fashion, so I'd love to hear your own predictions in the comments. I'm sure so many other new things will pop up, many trends will continue, 
I didn't even talk about bows in this video besides this one that I'm wearing, but I'm sure those will not drop off the face of fashion, you know, next week or anything. Although I do think maybe by the end of this year, we'll be leading more androgynous or more sexy and grown up rather than like cutesy with the bows. I don't know. Just throwing in another prediction here at the end. I also made a trend predictions video a year ago for 2023. I was kind of proud of myself when I looked back and watched it and I was like, yo, she was onto something. I also think a lot of the trends I mentioned there will continue to get bigger in 2024. So feel free to watch that right here and go comment how right or wrong you think I was. And if you watch that video, leave a comment here and or there and subscribe to my channel. I heard 2024 will be your best year yet. That was a, a corny one, but it's true. It will.